All right, I'm about to uh, do the suspension setup, alignment and whatnot on my spec Corvette. Uh, so the first thing here um, to do is actually has nothing to do with the car itself. It is to make sure that I have a level floor and pretty much any garage or shop, unless you specifically ask them to pour a perfectly level um, pad is just not going to be. So uh, first step for me, I've got um, a laser level. It's a self-leveling level. So basically you kind of get it into a rough zone and then from there uh, it levels itself. And then basically I run around with my ruler, I set it on top of my scale pads that are adjustable and I make sure that every single one of them is identical. Um, so all the way around every single scale pad, I've made sure that they're sitting at 14 inches like what you just saw. Um, and the scale pads have adjustable feet. Uh, so, uh, so that allows me to raise or lower the scale pad, kind of like what you're gonna do in a, in a corner balance to get everything exactly right. Uh, furthermore, my scale pads, um, the set has, uh, each side will have two. So my driver's side is where I have them, where the pads are sitting on rollers. So when the car comes down, there's natural tension uh, that will take the tension out and allow it to settle properly uh, without having to roll it around a bunch. Uh, so this is my driver's side. Uh, my passenger side doesn't have it, as you can see over here, uh, but the driver's side front and the driver's side rear both do. So uh, those are extremely helpful. It's very possible to do it without them. You know, you can put some newspaper or something slippery uh, between the scale pad and your tire, and that'll allow you to take some of the tension out, but these rollers are just a lot better. Um, so that's it on uh, leveling the floor. You gotta make sure that that is right. So you might have to go off and buy some tools for that. Uh, next step here for me is just to make sure that my sway bars are disconnected. I don't want any tension up here, uh, so they are. Uh, front and rear. So now I'm going to uh, drop this guy down and I'm going to start with setting my ride height. Uh, Spec Corvette suggested ride, ride height is somewhere between four and four and a half inches. I'm going to start with four and a half inches and then drop my corners from there to try to, uh, to, try to find a place where it's happy. Um, the reason I like to start higher is because while the car, you can see how what a mess my shop is right now, um, is while the car is... Um, potentially will handle well lower, your center of gravity will be lower. When you run at certain tracks, um, you run the risk of hitting your cross member on things, of, um, of uh, damaging the oil pan, things like that, which I've definitely done, even with a high ride height, if you hit a curb or something like that. So I actually prefer to have the car sitting a little higher. Furthermore, in spec Corvette, bump steer adjustments are not allowed, period. So. You have to run the, the stock geometry on your toe links, et cetera. So um, there's not a heck of a lot of advantage to going lower because you end up getting out of the bump steer sweet spot uh, from where the, where the car came from the factory. So I am going to set my ride height now to four to four and a half inches. That measurement will be done um, at the frame. So you can kind of see here, uh, it's hard to see because I've got my uh, a block of wood where that's at, but the, these jack points, there are flat spots to the front and to the rear of the jack points. So I will measure from my floor to these jack points, to these flat spots, um, to look for that four and a half inches. So that's gonna be my starting point. Uh, so I will get this thing down and, uh, and start to check that. All right, checking back in as I'm setting ride height, uh, something I forgot to mention before, uh, ride height will change with a driver and without a driver. And, while well, you're going to be in the car when it matters. So uh, you want to approximate your body weight. I'm about 160 pounds. So I've got 120 pounds of dumbbells sitting in my driver's seat. I've got another 40 pounds up there on the floor to kind of approximate my legs and, you know, close enough for horseshoes kind of geometry. Um, down here, what I've done is I've taken a piece of metal that's reasonably stout and I have uh, strewn it across my scale pads because I know those are level. So when I check my ride height now, I'm measuring from the frame rail, right, around this, uh, this jack point, which you can see where the hole is. So I'm looking at the flat spot in front of it here and checking my measurement and measuring down 
to the lower edge of this um, of this piece of metal. And the same thing in the front. And basically what I'm finding is out of the box, I'm sitting at four inches in the front and four and a quarter in the rear, uh, which out of the box actually isn't all that bad. Um, but I, what I'm going for is actually something a little closer to flat. Uh, some people like rake. You can use rake a bit where you can raise, you can raise the back end of the car to change the dynamics, change the way it rotates when you come into the corner, etc. Um, I find that I like the car to be very close to flat uh, with the back end up in the air. I have a hard time with trail braking coming into turns and I end up running slower overall. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start to raise up the front. I'll raise up the, the rear a little bit as well, uh, but I'll go a fair amount higher in the front to try to get myself up to that, uh, that four and a half inch starting point. All right, well, checking back in, uh, I've got the car sitting about where I want it to. Uh, I'll try to do this one-handed and hold the camera at the same time. You can see I'm sitting at about four and a half. I got about the same reading in the front, of course. You know, things change a little bit uh, when you move to different locations. So, um, uh, it's not quite right. There we go. Uh, so depending on where you measure from, you might get a different, a slightly different reading. That's okay. You just want to be in the ballpark, you know, get it in the general bar park, ballpark of four and a half. The truth is going to be, uh, when you hook up your scales and you start to check your corner weights. Um, and so that's what we're actually going to adjust to at the end of the day. We just want the car to be, you know, basically, you know, relatively level. So uh, I have that now. I'm sitting at four and a half at all locations. So now I'm going to uh, to shift gears to get my corner balance. All right, well now with the car on the scale pads, my computer hooked up, I have checked to make sure that I'm centered on all my scale pads. I've gone around, I've bounced the car a little bit. I've rolled it front to back to make sure that I release any tension in the system. And just right out of the gate, I'm really happy with my corner balance. Uh, I don't know that I've ever honestly been this lucky, which is probably what I'll call it. Uh, but it came out really close. So um, this is checking out like a typical Corvette. It's a little bit heavy in the front, a little bit lighter in the rear. The right rear is the place where it's light. Uh, but my corners are sitting at like it's, t it's toggling between 50.3 and 50.2. Uh, you could race like that all day long and your corner balance is great. Um, the problem I see here, though, is my total weight is 3130. I've got a half a tank of fuel in here right now. The minimum weight in Spec Corvette is 3200 with the driver, and I've got that weight in there to approximate my weight. I've got a half a tank of fuel right now, which is what you want, um, generally speaking, when you're checking your corner balance. So um, I'm going to need to add a little bit of weight. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is find some weight to throw in the car, see if I can get myself up to... Uh, 3,200 at about this half a tank, which is about where I'll come in. If I fill it, I'll, I'll come down to about half a tank. And I like to race with more fuel in there because I don't want fuel starvation or anything. So I'm going to throw a little weight in the car and I'll see if I can get that up to 3,200 and I'll see what it does to my cross weight. Because ideally I'll be putting the weight uh, near this right rear. That's going to bring that up and it should start to bring my cross weights in line. All right, well, checking back in now, uh, I've done a couple of things. One is I, uh, I put the rear exhaust in. I had the H pipe in, uh, but without the, uh, the rear mufflers. So that added some weight. And then additionally, I went ahead and I added some ballast uh, in the pass rear of the, the passenger seat or at the back of the passenger seat on the floor. Uh, so that adjusted me a little bit. You can see I'm sitting at exactly 3,200 pounds with a half a tank of fuel. Um, and so you can see the distribution changed a little bit. And my corner weights actually got a hair worse. Um, looking at this, it's not entirely intuitive until you sit and you think about it for a minute, exactly where it's a little bit off. But basically what this is telling me is that these corner weights right here, so my right front and my left rear, are supporting a little bit more weight than they should be relative to my right rear and my left front. So the way that I can adjust that is effectively by lowering both of these uh uh, these wheels just a little bit. So if I crank this guy up a hair, so release a little bit of pressure, lower that edge of the car, and lower this edge of the car a hair, it will reduce the amount of weight on these corners and increase the amount of weight on these corners. So I'm going to raise the car up 
I'm going to go at that just a hair to bring this in. Again, even at 50.5, this is really good. It doesn't really require a lot of screwing around. But I'm going to make a small adjustment there to bring it in a little bit. But uh, it's not going to take very long because of probably one or two tries at this, and I'll have it exactly where we want it. All right, checking back in, uh, you can see I've uh, got really lucky, honestly, is what this is, and I landed at exactly 50.0. Uh, if you take a look at what has happened with the corner weights now, uh, essentially what I did is I lowered um, the right front a half a turn, and I lowered the left rear a half a turn. Basically, that released a little bit of pressure from those two, and it increased the pressure on the left front in the right rear so i uh, just nailed it so obviously i'm going to leave it here i'm not going to screw around with it anymore um uh, that's about as good as it gets so um i guess the this was a pretty easy one not not problematic at all to try to dial in but some things that you just want to know when you're doing this are when you're dialing in your corner weights you cannot by raising and lowering the rear shift weight from the front of the car to the rear of the car or vice versa and you cannot shift weight from the right side of the car to the left side of the car or vice versa the only way that you can do that is by moving weight around so if you pull a bunch of weight out of the car and you need to add ballast that is a way to move weight so if you wanted to to weight up this right rear the way would be to remove weight from the car add ballast over that right rear and that'll start to bring it up the only thing that you can do with corner balance is change how much pressure is on the op the opposing corners and what that's going to do is that's going to change the way the car handles and turns so so that if you were running ovals this might be the kind of thing that you would want to mess with since we run um road courses you, you just want 50, you want 50-50, because when you turn right versus left, you basically want it to perform the same way. So I'm gonna stop here, I'm gonna tighten everything down, and that is going to be the end of the corner balance. Now I'm going to shift into uh, the rest of the alignment, getting my caster set, etc. All right, well, uh, getting my caster done here, or dialed in. Uh, you can see I've got the car sitting on turn plates. Uh, the wheel is cocked to the right towards the passenger side. Uh, you can see here um, with my little hash mark, I made that when it was sitting at zero. It is now sitting at 20 degrees. So effectively, you're going to use your camber measurement tool to take the reading. Um, and then on both sides, write that down. And then crank the wheel the opposite direction to the other 20 degrees. So you've got a 40 degree total swing. You're going to take the reading there. Um, and then... Um, and then do a little bit of math. So coming over to my board, uh, you can see where I, I did some math. My driver's side readings uh, do pay attention to positive versus negative, uh, by the way, or that can throw you. Uh, so my driver's side readings, when I had it cranked to the left, I had a positive three, um, and my passenger side had a negative 2.5. Uh, when I cranked it to the right, I had a negative 2.4 on the driver's side and a positive 2.8 on the passenger side. Now I started with like, I think half a degree on on the passenger side and 0.3 degrees on the driver's side. So it was like next to no camber in here, but that's okay. It's as long as they were kind of in the ballpark, um, we're good to go. So essentially now I'm taking the difference between these two things. So the difference between uh, the two readings on the driver's side is 5.4 degrees. The difference on the passenger side is 5.3 degrees. Um, and then I'm gonna multiply by a formula. I'm not gonna go into this a whole heck of a lot, but basically, a multiply by 1.43, uh, you can abbreviate to, to 1.5, which seems to be fairly common, but uh, the formula, I believe, actually produces 1.43. And so when I multiply these numbers by 1.43, I end up with 7.72 on my driver's side and, and 7.6 on my passenger side, which is really close. So um, I won't necessarily have to monkey with this a whole heck of a lot. Uh, but can make a couple of changes in order to dial it in uh, while I'm making adjustments to camber. All right, well, coming over here, um, uh, basically I'm on my passenger side uh, looking at my upper control arms. And essentially the thing to do if I want to increase caster on my passenger side is at the front, this is the front of the vehicle uh, up here. Uh, so I, my rear attachment point is back there behind the strut or the coilover, excuse me. If I want to increase caster over here on the passenger side, I just add some shims back here to increase that out. So what I can do if I want to make those match is just throw a tiny little shim behind there, and that'll give me about the, the, the tenth of a point reading that I'm looking for. 
there. If I wanted to reduce it, I would reduce the shims on this side um, to, to, uh, to bring it into line. So that's probably the easier way to do it. You can also do it by making adjustments on the bottom. Um, personally, I like to keep the bottom as even as I can um, so that I can focus on like camber adjustments down here uh, from my AMT mounts. You can also make camber adjustments up top, but I want to try to keep things balanced. So likely what I will do here is just go ahead and throw a washer in. That'll get my caster pretty much spot on, a nice, really thin uh, washer shim. Uh, do it on both of these posts. You always want to do the same thing on both of them. Don't get smart and try to do one up here and don't do one back here. So I'll add one there and that's going to pretty much bring me in line. Uh, so so that's uh, I'll do that, but that's going to be about it on caster. Uh, now I'm going to shift gears and start to get into um, getting my overall camber lined up. All right, well, checking back in now, I've been working on my camber. So I'm just going to show you where I landed, essentially. So with my AMT camber, um, camber adjusters in the rear, I'm on the street setting. It's got two. There's a, a track setting and a street setting. So I'm on the street setting at the farthest out. Um, in the rear on my passenger side and over here I uh, the the farthest out on the street didn't quite get me far enough so I had to switch it over to the track setting um, and I'm basically second from max and uh, those that has me sitting at 1.5 degrees of camber in the rear uh, coming up front I just went ahead and I set them to um, as, as the street setting again, and I put them at the maximum just to see essentially where they landed. Uh, and it put me at uh, basically 2.7 degrees on my passenger side uh, and 2.8 degrees on my driver's side, so pretty close. Um, I went ahead and threw some 16th inch shims up top, right? So those go up here behind uh, the mounts on the studs that I installed earlier. Uh, and those 16th inch shims took out about a 10th of a degree, um, at least according to my, to my gauge. So I'm sitting at exactly 2.7 on both sides. Um, I would say historically, I like to run two and a half degrees. I think this time around, I'm going to go ahead and try it a little bit higher at 2.7. I've been hearing from some folks that they like, um, they like these Nankangs and, uh, and the setup with the new rear spoiler. Uh, with a little bit more camber. So I'm going to give that a try and see what it does. If I want to dial any out, um, I know that's pretty easy. So at the track, I can just add, you know, a 16th inch shim per degree, basically. And that's going to, uh, that's going to start to dial me back out. So two 16th inch shims will, um, will bring me out to two and a half. So anyway, I'm going to, I'm going to work on that. And, uh, or work with that, I guess. And from here, I'm going to move on to getting my strings on so that I can work on getting a toe and thrust angle and all that stuff. All right, well, now I've got my strings on. Uh, these are uh, BG Racing strings that I, I picked up from Summit. Uh, I don't know that they're anything special to speak of. I think you can use pretty much anything. I mean, heck, I used to use jack stands uh, and sewing thread uh, back in the day. So... Uh, basically, all you're looking to do is get the strings on the car, which is nice because if you need to raise and lower the car, the strings stay uh, in, oriented with the car. And then um, down here, basically, uh, you're just going to measure from the hub out to the string on each side. So uh, each rear should be exactly the same distance. Each front should be exactly the same distance. And, um, and obviously you want it to be centered on, um, on the wheel itself. So, so now that I've got these in position, uh, basically what I'll just start to do is take my measurements uh, front and rear. So the car is squared uh, relative to the hubs. Um, so at this point now, I can just dial in my toe. Um, because it's squared front to rear, it's also gonna take care of my thrust angle. So I don't have to worry about the car uh, just driving at a funny angle. Uh, down the track or the road or whatever. So um, anyway, these are relatively easy to use. It's just a lot of measuring. Um, so now as I measure my toe, you know, basically I'm gonna come out with my tape measure and I'm gonna measure the distance 
uh, from the rear of the wheel and the distance from the front of the wheel. And that's gonna tell me how much toe I have on each side. So on the front, I'm going for something close to zero to maybe like a 30 second out. Doesn't need to be a lot. That's generally gonna help me at corner entry. And then in the back, if you wanna go really aggressive uh, and keep the back end settled, you can go as high as a quarter uh, without the rear spoiler. That's actually what I would recommend that you run. Uh, with the rear spoiler, you don't need so much back there. So I'd recommend going a little bit less, maybe a 16th less, something like that. Um, so it'll be more like three, uh, three sixteenths. So that's what I'll be going for in the back. So now I'll just get to wrenching and check back with you. All right, well, that was relatively easy. You know, it takes a little bit of time and some trial and error. I uh, got my rear totally square. So I am uh, base, I'm three thirty seconds in on each side, right? So basically you're gonna do half of your toe on one side, half of your toe on the other. So three thirty seconds over here, three thirty seconds over on the other side. Uh, up here in the front, um, it's a little, you're working with some pretty small tolerances, so I'm just I'm zero, perfectly zero over here on the passenger side. On the driver side, I'm one thirty second. Uh, so, uh, so basically, overall one thirty second toe out, uh, right in the rear, toe in. Uh, so I'm happy with that. I'm gonna go ahead and get it in the air, uh, lock everything in place with the jam nuts, and that'll be it on this alignment, at least until I get to the track and I take some temperatures. Uh, do remember, uh, each time you make an adjustment in tow, you really need to roll the car front and back uh, to make sure that you work out any tension because that can cause a little bit of a difference for you uh, and drive you nuts as you try to make changes and it keeps moving on you. So anyway, just make sure every time you make an adjustment uh, with to the rod end that you give it a quick roll. Uh, but that's it. So. I do recommend using strings, uh, at least in your home shop. Um, at the track, to make some adjustments once you're totally square, uh, toe plates and a couple of tape measures work great. So this is what I take to the track. I usually don't take my strings. Um, so uh, this is just a, let's see if you can see it here, quick car toe plates and a couple of just matching, they came with the kit, uh, quick car tape measures. Um, and that's uh, basically all I need at the track. So. If something happens to one side, I can generally tell that it happened to that particular side, uh, and I just make my adjustment over there. And then when I get it back to the shop, throw the strings back on it, make sure that it's square. But the toe plates uh, generally at the track are gonna get me close enough if I need to make a repair. So uh, that's it on alignment. Uh, should cover everything. Of course, if you have questions, feel free to hit the comments and I'll do my best to help you out.